hello friends in last class we have seen uh, three models of uh, multi thread okay that is nothing but uh, three types of uh, relationships uh, between uh, user level threads and uh, kernel level threads now we will move to uh, thread libraries okay don't get confusion with this topic and our previous topic previous topic was multi thread models it means in a process how multiple number of threads are organized or structured it means uh, uh, in terms of uh, support from the users or uh, support from the kernel and uh, in terms of uh, management or management of uh, uh, that uh, threads by the users or uh, uh, kernels they are categorized into two types of threads there of course that is user level threads and uh, kernel level threads but uh, that topic is different and uh, there are models where uh, many to one and one to one and uh, many to many those are multi thread models and uh, support is uh, provided in two levels either in user level and kernel level but uh, this topic is a thread libraries it means uh, uh, different types of uh, threads uh, we are going to study here hmm. so <coughs> this uh, thread library uh, it means uh, it is a set of uh, threads so this uh, thread library provides uh, or it contains one api that api is nothing but application programming interface so this is a interface or a link between one piece of software to another piece of software okay, this uh, thread library provides this uh, api to programmer and what is the purpose of this api what is the use of this api we should think about here so this api helps the programmer to create the threads and to create uh, and to manage the threads and there are two types of uh, uh, implementation methods are there for this uh, thread library it means how we can implement this thread library there are two methods or two approaches are there in the first method uh, we can implement this uh, thread library particularly which thread library the library which is present at user level so this first method implements this user level library which is supported by only by the users with no kernel support and here uh, in this uh, approach or in this method all code section and uh, data structures or data sections of this uh, threads or library are present in user level so this means that uh, suppose uh, if we want to call a function in a library it is indirectly means that we are calling a local function in user level only we are not calling a system call in a operating system system call already we have studied in first module system call is a interface for the operating system services so it means that operating system provides us many number of services if you want to uh, uh, take any service from the operating system we can use these system calls so here we are not going to contact operating system we are going to call the functions which are only present in the user level the second method is to implement this kernel level library which is supported directly by the kernel or operating system in this second method code section and all data sections or data structure for this library or threads are present in only kernel level so here in <coughs> user level library the threads are present in user level and they are supported and managed by the users not by the kernel so here code and data structures are also present in user level but in the kernel level the kernel level threads are supported by the kernel or operating system and here code and data structures are present in kernel level this means that in kernel level by uh, if we want to call a function it means that indirectly we are calling operating system or kernel for uh, any particular service okay? so it is called as a system call to the kernel there are mainly three types of libraries are uh, uh, popular in today's uh, operating systems those uh, uh, thread libraries are posix 
P threads second one is uh, win 32 and third is Java this P threads is nothing but it is a uh, just a extension of a POS6 standard that is portable operating system interface for Unix operating system it is one IEEE standard for uh, application portability in uh, Unix operating system so this uh, P thread is nothing but it is also just an extension of this uh, POS6 standards it means that these P threads are present or related or associated with Unix operating system okay P threads uh, may be provided as a uh, either a user level or a kernel level it means that this P threads may be present in either a user level or else kernel level and second one is win32 this thread library is present in kernel level okay which is also available on windows operating system the first one was p thread which is associated or present in unix operating system and these p threads may be present either in user level or else kernel level but win32 win32 thread library is associated with windows operating systems and it is present in only kernel level and the third one is a java thread api or java thread library this uh, java thread library allows these uh, uh, java programs directly to create and manage the threads okay? and uh, now let us uh, discuss these three types of uh, thread libraries uh, in a little bit uh, detail that is uh, here we are going to see how to create a thread by uh, in uh, um, uh, all these uh, three uh, types of uh, thread libraries so first one is p threads p threads as already told it is a po6 uh, standard it is so p thread is a po6 standard uh, which will define an api that is application programming interface for thread creation and thread synchronization and here we use uh, two functions here one is main function and one is run function or runner function so these two functions are used to create and control the threads and uh, for these two functions or methods we have to pass some parameters or attributes so a set of attributes or parameters is passed to these functions and uh, this p threads is just a specification for a thread behavior it is not a implementation it means that specification is nothing but a requirement what type of requirement how you want that thread to behave it is your requirement my thread should behave in such a way or in this way it is your specification or requirement so these p threads is related to specification for thread behavior it is not a implementation so operating system designers may use specification in any way however they want so many systems including solaris linux mac os x and true64 unix all these operating systems use pthread specification second type of thread library is win32 threads as I already told it is associated with the windows operating system these threads are created in win32 api by using one function that is create thread function like p threads here also we have to pass some parameters or attributes to this function which function create thread function and these all attributes <coughs> give us some type of information so what these parameters contain they contain some information what type of information they contain they contain the security information they contain the size of the stack and also they contain a flag so what is the use of this flag this flag informs us or tells us whether that thread has to start from the suspended state or else runnable state or running state or executing state third type of thread libraries java threads see <coughs> already we know the definition of threads it is a basic unit of cpu utilization okay when we consider operating system and process we can say a thread is a basic unit of cpu utilization but when we 
consider or when we talk about uh, java threads or java programs threads are nothing but here they are uh, again basic or fundamental model of program execution so it is just a small model of a program execution in java program here java language as well as uh, its uh, api both of them will provide some uh, features for thread creation and thread management here so java language and uh, along with that language its api provide us some set of uh, features for creation and maintenance of or management of uh, threads and each and every java program contains at least one thread or uh, at least single thread of uh, control so even one simple java program which contains uh, only one main function can uh, run as a single thread in jvm that is a java virtual machine and there are two techniques to create these threads in a java program the first method is uh, before going to that first method i want to tell you the difference between overloading and overriding so overloading when it occurs suppose in a same class there are two or more methods or two or more functions are there and these method names are same but that method parameters are different okay this is overloading overriding means there are two different different classes or two or more different different classes are there and in each class there are again some methods are there and those methods have same method name as well as the same parameters that is overriding so since same method name and same parameters are present but these all methods are not present in a same class they are present in different different classes that is overriding so first approach here or first method is to create a new class which is already derived from a parent class called as thread class and this parent class thread has already one method that is run the method name is run and also it may contain some parameters now we have to create one child process of the ch parent process called thread class that child uh, child class we have to create a child class and that child class is derived from the parent class called thread class and uh, since that uh, parent class contain one uh, contains one uh, method called run the child class also can have a same name along with same parameters because we are just overriding the run method which is already present in a parent class that is thread class uh, second method is most commonly used method so here just we are defining a, a new separate class and that class is going to implement one runnable interface that is nothing but that uh, com since we are completely defining a new class means what here that class may contain one run method it means we have to define ourselves that uh, run method here we are not overriding the run method from the parent class these are the two methods to create the threads first create first method is just to derive the class derive a new class from parent class and since that parent class has one run method the same method name uh, and parameters we can override in a uh, child class second method is which is common uh, just we are going to define a new class within that new class we are going to define uh, our own run method we are not overriding the run method from uh, parent class here and creating a thread object doesn't create a new thread creating a thread object will not create a separate and new thread instead of that one it just it is a start method which creates the new thread here so if you want to create a new thread we have to call a function or method that is start so we cannot create the thread object by creating thread object that uh, will not create new thread we have to call start method to create a new thread 
calling this uh, start method or start function for a new object will uh, perform two things in that first is it allocates a memory and uh, it initializes a new thread in jvm and second it calls a run method to make that uh, thread to be uh, executed by the jvm uh, and uh, if you observe here we are not directly uh, calling uh, run method uh, first we are calling a start method on behalf of us that start method will call in turn uh, run method okay? thank you